Hi, I just recorded about 17 minutes and somehow just lost it and then I couldn't get back to it and edit the file. <laughs> Me and technology, I'm telling you, it is just no bueno. Alrighty, I'm in the car heading home up north and I felt sad leaving my house and I think it had something to do with my night. So if you listen to my last few podcasts, you know that I met a 22-year-old young woman who was just radiating joy and love and peace and I just adore her. Her name is Chrissy and I didn't get anyone's approval to say their name so I'm not going to say any of the names but she invited me over to her parents house last night for dinner and there was a part of me that was a little like oh gosh I hope this goes well but then the minute that I got there the minute that I got there Her mom and her two sisters and her, they're standing on the porch and I come up the stairs and it's like hugging time. And I felt so welcomed, so at home. I was so grateful, so grateful. And we talked and we talked and we talked and we talked. And not just her mom and her sisters and, you know, not not just that Chrissy's awesome, but her sisters and her mom and then her dad came in with the priest. Two priests were there and her grandfather was there, and it was just amazing. I felt so comfortable. We were talking about faith, and it's so great to be with people who are on your journey too. And these people are taking their faith seriously. I mean, we talked about a lot of things. Just so happened that the book that I am listening to, Jacques Philippe, Searching For and Maintaining Peace, There was a story behind that. Chrissy read it, and then a friend of hers was giving her a book that she read, and they both gave each other the same book. I think there's just a lot of God incidences in this whole thing, with me meeting her and then me coming out and knowing that her mom is pretty active in the parish, and I'm like, okay, I gotta get I gotta get involved. And so if anyone is listening out there who is not walking with people personally on the journey, I mean, yes, we walk together, but it's not exactly like having a friend that is by you in person to build that relationship because Jesus says we are made for community. We are made for relationship. We're made for relationship to him, with him, and Mary, and, but it's important to have people, physical people on this earth to help us too. And it may be people that you listen to on podcasts or watch on YouTube But there's nothing like hanging out, getting to know someone, and feeling so comfortable to share your heart, which is what I did last night. And unfortunately, I cried a few times. And uh, (laughs) that Holy Spirit gift of tears that I have sometimes takes over, especially when I'm talking about my husband. And they were just so beautiful, so kind. Ah, tears are coming to my eyes right now. And I know this was God's working. I know this was God. He was doing it. He put Chrissy in my way that day at confession. Possibly because I was, for a couple of weeks, not feeling so good about that final step, putting my house for sale up north in Illinois and permanently moving down to Tennessee. And then the book came into my life and I started listening and more and more and more I realized how God is inserting himself through this knowledge, through the book, through me letting go and giving it all to him and allowing him to shower his peace on me and me to just give him every little tidbit of anxiety that I could ever have. I just give it to him and now I have this beautiful Catholic loving family I'm just amazed amazed God can do amazing things and so I'm gonna see if I can you know maybe get into something on the uh, with the parish and meet more people I think I'm gonna go to the 11 o'clock Sunday mass sounds like there's younger families there I haven't that's the only one I haven't been to I've been to the Saturday night and both 8 30s on Sunday I think I've been there twice 
and then obviously the 11 o'clock and I want to give that give that a go so if you guys are out there struggling to find people on the journey get involved Get involved in some way. Strike up a conversation with someone in confession. It's amazing what you can find. Oh, it just reminded me. Karen, if you're out there, I got your email. I will definitely respond because I was sharing about me meeting Chrissy and she met some amazing priest in her confession line and I haven't responded to that email. So sorry about that. Get involved. Put yourself out there. Say hi to people. You know, I mean, that's one of the things that I don't think we do good at all in the Catholic Church. I mean, I'm there to worship God. You know, I've got my veil on. I'm not looking around to be chummy and happy friends with people during Mass. I'm not saying hi to people when I'm going up to receive Jesus. You know, I'm serious about it. But after Mass, you know, saying hi to someone and You know, that's something that we Catholics don't do good. Don't do, don't do good. We don't, we're not that good at inviting people and getting to know people and introducing ourselves to newbies. And I remember when I was a newbie on my journey, I sat in the back row in the corner all by myself because at that time I didn't want someone to come up to me and get to know me and then ask me to volunteer <laughs> I did not want that but now I mean that's that sounds great you know but I'm, I'm so far along on my journey and I'd love to help I'd love to help that parish okay my parish pretty soon right So last night was awesome. Again, when I walked up the stairs, hugs everywhere, I felt immediately comfortable. And just chatting with them just made me feel so full. Like, you know, when you're like, ah, like you don't need anything else. You're not seeking that something that's going to fill that God-shaped hole because you have God. You've given it to God. You're saying, you take care of this. And then he does something like puts Chrissy in my way. Which then leads me to her whole family and the two priests, amazing priests. Oh, I got to share this one with you. So I was talking to one priest and he said, oh, I don't really want tea because... In 6.9 miles, oh. stay to the right to I-57 North, I-70 East toward Chicago, Indianapolis. Darn it. Let me turn that off if I can forgot that was on so now you know where I'm going (laughs) okay let's see if that worked doing this in the highway not so smart okay sorry guys I don't know how I can edit that out I may not be able to and I do not want to re-record because this will be the second time I'd have to do that oh right so I talked to the priest he didn't want the caffeine and the tea And I was like, yeah, are you all about that? I go, do you drink coffee? And he's like, not anymore. And he shared with me that he was, you know, needing to drink coffee to stay awake when he was in seminary and learning so much. And I think philosophy was, you know, not keeping him awake. And so afterwards, when he got out, he said, I have to stop drinking coffee because I'm addicted to it. And I said, I mean, I didn't say this to him, but I was thinking in my mind, God is speaking right through you to me because I have been listening to what coffee does to you on podcasts and how horrible it is. It eats your stomach lining. It totally destroys your microbiome. By the way, coffee does have carbs, probably three carbs a cup. And you're thinking, carbs, what? Even if I eat a bla- or drink a black coffee? Yeah, it's a bean. And then... It puts your body in this constant cortisol raise state. So you're in this fight or flight mode all day long until the caffeine wears off. For some people it's eight hours, for other people it's four. But think about that. Our bodies aren't made to be in a fight or flight mode all the time. I mean, if you're running away from a lion, you're going to run for a while, not very long, because he's going to catch up to you or you're going to be safe, right? You're going to be eaten or you're going to be safe. And that is, is so, there's so many reasons. And it's a neurotoxin too. I used to say this about my wine. Alcohol is poison to the brain. So is caffeine. 
And if anyone gets out there and says, oh, what about the antioxidants? It does not at all outweigh all of the negatives. It turns your teeth brown. It eats your enamel off. It gives you bad breath. <laughs> I mean, think about it. When you look at coffee, it's this black, nasty stuff, you know? But I'm, I'm working on it. So here's, here's my plan on the coffee side. I have a, probably about one, one full mason jar of coffee at my house down in Tennessee. And then I have one container in the freezer, a small one of the beans up north. I just finished my uh, heavy whipping cream this morning. And it is something that I'm going to do. I just don't want to waste the coffee. And I guess it's kind of preparing me cup by cup, step by step of walking away from this thing that perhaps I'm addicted to. And maybe it's not even the actual addiction of the, you know, the chemical addiction. I think I'm addicted to the ritual. That's what I shared with the priest last night. I'm like, oh, you know, I just love getting up. I love the smell of coffee. I, I love knowing that soon I'm going to have my heavy whipping cream and butter in there and I can just cup my hands around the cup itself and sit and relax and pray. I mean, it's even better when it's in the winter time. I mean, come on now. That's just amazing. Okay. I'm doing it. I'm doing it, my friends. I am going to get rid of it some way, somehow. Okay, so my mom, I have to switch gears here because I want to get to the bread that I ate. My mom was a little nervous about me going there because she didn't know who they were, didn't know if maybe it was alluring of me of some kind, and I laugh because I'm like, no, mom, I'm totally fine with this. Um, but I get it because she says the older I get, the more suspicious I am. And I I understood that totally. So I sent her the address and she texted me. She goes, well, are you going to not eat? Are you going to stop keto? And I said, I'm just going to see what she has. I think it's going to be barbecued pork. So I just thought it was funny that my mom asked that. And I go there and it's time for dinner and I'm looking around and I'm like, okay, first Chrissy made homemade sourdough, you know, with that starter She had a friend give her the starter. She's been trying to develop a starter and make her stuff for so long. It's not easy to make sourdough bread from scratch, but it is so worth it because you have the good bacteria rather than the store-bought sour bread, which it's sour because they put citric acid in it. They don't take the time to make it the right way. And that was something that I was like, I cannot turn down homemade sourdough and I cannot disappoint Chrissy either by not having a taste of it because she took so long to make it that was my logic and I'm like it's not going to kill me you know one day of this so I had some of the pork and it had some barbecue sauce on it and I had coleslaw and I think of course there's a couple carbs in there and then a one slice of sourdough bread And I'm laughing because as I was done eating my plate, my mind was already saying, go get another piece of bread. You already had one. And it was, I was like, where is that coming from? Because I wasn't hungry. There was nothing hunger about it. And I wonder if that was little, the evil one, you know, trying to get me to just lose control and go eat a bunch of bread. I don't know, but I, I shut it down real fast. I said, come on, you enjoyed that piece of bread. So here's the experience. I ate the bread. It was very good. It was a really good sourdough bread, but I expected my, myself to have a much greater experience. Like, oh, like slobbering out of the side of my mouth, you know, going, oh my God, this is the best sourdough I've ever had. I got to stop keto. I got to go back to this. But it wasn't like that. It was good. I appreciated it. I enjoyed it. But my body wasn't like, wow, this is awesome. Which is great. Because I don't want to put bread in my diet. I don't want to go out of my keto slash carnivore lifestyle. I don't because this is where I feel the best. 
And so I had to say to myself, as myself was wanting to go get another piece, I said, no, you are not getting another piece. One is fine. And then I looked up how many carbs <laughs> were in homemade sourdough. And there's close to 60, six zero. And my body barely even gets 10, not even over 20. So anyway, had to share. I enjoyed the bread, not something that I am dying to bring back into my life. And I'm super happy that I ate homemade bread because the difference is the good bacteria and the good stuff in your gut. But I'm gonna tell you, when you eat carbs, your cells fill up with water. And I could tell by the time I got home, like I can usually see my hip bones when I look at myself in the mirror. They were gone. And I, I would just grab <laughs> grab my stomach and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's huge, huge. So that's another thing that I was paying attention to and I couldn't wait to go to bed and get up. This morning it was almost all gone. Um, but you know, when your body reacts like that to one piece of bread and some of the sugar in the barbecue sauce and some of the you know carbs in, and sugar possibly in the coleslaw, the body is like, it was kind of like, whoa, what is this? And when you do that, your insulin spikes, your blood sugar spikes, and you go storing in your fat cells. Okay, I'm digressing back. What am I digressing back to? It was a wonderful time. I sent a note after I got home and I said, hey, I would love to get together with your mom and help out at the parish. And so I'm hoping that I get to know her more and hang out and all that kind of stuff. I don't know, I'm not pushing myself on them at all, but they are such beautiful people. And I definitely felt taken care of, I felt at home, I felt loved, and that's totally cool. I think I'm gonna try and go to 11 o'clock mass. Maybe I'll meet some more people through them. And that's what it's all about. So again, people on the journey, if you need more of them or you don't have any, Make sure that you step in, step up, step out of your comfort zone, step into doing things with your parish, step up and say something to someone like, hi, how you doing? I mean, there's been nobody at this parish that has said hello to me. I've always said hello to them. And that to me just goes to show sometimes we're not that inviting at mass to people who are new or they're staying away from me because I'm wearing a veil but I don't think so because a whole bunch of other people wear veils there too and the cool thing is as I identified the first time I went there there's a lot of super catholic people and for that I am glad alrighty everyone we're I am oh, I gotta go another 56 miles I was gonna pull over and go to the rest area but I don't know how to stop this thing without me having to re-record it again. So looks like I'm going to have to hold it for 56 miles. <laughs> okay, so let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, you made us for relationship relationship with you and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, with Mary and the saints and our guardian angel and all the holy angels, help us down here on earth to have spiritual companions so that we can walk together, love one another to heaven. We ask if you, if you can please give us a nudge to the people that we need to go say hi to or introduce ourselves to. Give us the courage to step out and volunteer for helping out at the parish. Maybe even starting a new ministry of some sort. Lord, we ask for your guidance in our life down here because we do need people on the journey. And Heavenly Father, please help us with self-control and self-discipline so that we can be that witness to everyone around us, that we do have control over our mind, our words, our deeds. 
because that is the most important thing that we can do to evangelize this world. Come into our hearts today. Show us your love. And we will pray constantly for more spiritual companions in our life here on earth. And now we're going to pray for all the souls who are no longer here on earth with, with us in purgatory by name. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In your holy, loving name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, today, tonight actually, 6.30 p.m. Central Time, I'm going live again on YouTube. It's going to be every Monday at 6.30 Central. And we are going to talk about how to live a self-disciplined, self-controlled life. We are called as Christian Christians hmm, to do that, to live that lifestyle. And I think about myself for so many years that just allowed my body to rule me. Always, whatever came into my mind or whatever urge I had, I just went and did it. I never thought, the word discipline, I hated. And now, I have so much freedom in discipline. So much freedom to choose and to say no, just like with <laughs> the sourdough bread. No, you do not need another piece of bread. Are you kidding me? Even though my body wanted it, I just wanted it. I wasn't hungry and I was paying attention, which is even cooler because I could have just easily gotten up. There was plenty there, but I didn't. And for that, I thank God. Because when we do pay attention and when we realize what we're called to be, we can bring God into everything and totally kick these addictions and these bad habits to the curb. So join me tonight, 6.30 p.m. Central Time, live on YouTube, and bring your comments. I totally appreciate it. Okay, on that note, I'm going to let you go on with your day. I appreciate you listening to just my personal stuff today. But I think in a lot of cases, we all are see seeking and searching for those spiritual companions that can be our besties, you know, your spiritual bestie. And I am so grateful, so grateful that God put this family in my life and these two priests. I just, I don't even have words. And I truly believe that I am going to be calling Tennessee home very, very soon. All right, everyone, I love you all so much. Find something more with God, soul, mind, and body, and have a blessed and inspired day.